Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about how to solve an AP Physics B Mechanics free response problem um, from 2022. This is from set number one, and this is problem number three. What I would encourage you to do is go ahead and go to the AP Physics B Mechanics website, um, which is linked below, um, and go ahead and download this problem. Try it yourself. Give yourself 15 minutes to do it, and then you can check back in on the video to see how you did on the problem. Okay, so now that you've went ahead and done that, let's go ahead and look at the problem together. So for, okay, so one thing to always keep in mind is when you do a problem, you only are allowed to have certain things in your final answer. They went ahead and list them here. Physical constants, again, that would be like the acceleration due to gravity, little g, or like big G, universal gravitational constant, kind of things like that. Um, so let's go ahead. So we want an expression for the mass mv of the block. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and write here, mass mv. I'm going to just do a to the side just because you can see the problem. It's important to see the picture for this one. So is this thing moving or at rest? It is definitely at rest. So the total mass force is going to be a, going to be zero. So let's look at this. We know pulling down is essentially going to be force of tension acting on this thing, which is going to be equal to the tension pulling up on the block, which is going to be equal to the force of gravity because it's not moving. And the force of gravity on the block is going to just be mvg. OK, let's look at the other side. So the thing directly touching this wheel um, it's just going to be, again, force of tension. I should call it the left, and I'll call the other one force of tension on the right. So force of tension left. Pulling up on this um, is, again, it's like tension. It's a rope, okay? But it is spring force right here. Okay. And actually, I should label this as uh, spring force because it is the spring is being stretched upward kind of thing. So we know the tension on the left is equal to the spring force right there. So essentially for this problem, I'm going to go ahead and Fg is going to be equal to spring force essentially. Uh, because, again, the tension to the rope are equal on either side, and it's the spring force that causes that tension on the left, and the force of gravity that causes it on the right. So I'm going to say force of spring equals Fg. So I know my equation for spring force is going to be Kx, and Fg is going to be Mg. Okay, so again, this is going to be mass of B times G. Let's see what's allowed in our final answer. Again, if you get this far, you're in a pretty good spot. Uh, but we just need a little more. Okay, so we're allowed to have g. That's the physical constant. We want to find mb. k is allowed in our final answer. We just got to find x. Okay, this is a tricky one. So if you remember um, the relationship, so right here, I'm going to draw it in a different color. This is going to be x right here. That is an arc length. x is going to be equal to the radius of the thing, which again, they use capital R times beta. So we can go ahead and plug that in over here. Um, and then we can solve. So k equal, k times r theta equals mvg. Okay, and again, we're solving for mv. So that's just going to be k r theta divided by g equals mv. Okay, so let's go ahead and go through the rubric for this one. So this a is going to be out of three points. You get one point for recognizing f net or t net is zero. You get one point for essentially writing like spring force is equal to fg or like you know something along those lines kind of thing and then you get one point for correctly identifying that the arc length x is equal to r times theta okay so now we will go ahead um so it looks like now the something is cut so, so the spring on the right hand side of the disc is cut and the block falls to the ground so now we need to draw a free body diagram for the disc so again first thing just knowing this Force of gravity is going to act on the disc, and that is just going to originate from the center point of the disc. So that is just going to be Fg. Um, then let's see, what else do we have? We have the disc is attached to like a hinge kind of thing. So we're going to have the force of the hinge just pushing directly upwards on it. And then there's still a rope like attached to it. So again, the rope, I'm going to say the point of attachment, I think, is right about here. So I'm going to say force of attachment. If you say the force of attachment is like right here, like on the far side, like right here, you could also say the attachment of the rope is right there. So either what I drew in black or the other one in green would be fine, but not like both of them kind of thing. So for this one, it is just good. the rubric is just going to be out of three points, and it's just going to be one point for each force. So one point for FT, one point for F hinge, and one point for FT as long as you do drew it tangent. Um, to like the circle of the disc at like any of those points that I drew. Okay, let's go ahead and look on to number two. Okay, so for C, we want to find angular acceleration. So anytime you're dealing with forces and you want to find an angular acceleration, you're going to want to deal with torque. So 
So I'm good. I'm going to just write down the equation T net is equal to I alpha. So now let's go ahead and see what we can plug in. Okay. So what force makes this rotate? Okay, so gravity is applied at the center of the object. That's not going to make it rotate. The hinge force is applied at the center of it. That's not going to make it rotate. The tension force is applied tangentially, so that's going to make it rotate. And again, the torque is a force times an R. So this is just going to be FT times R equals I. I think they give us I already in this problem. Yep, it's going to be this thing right here. So 1 half MD times R squared. So that's like the formula for a solid guess. MD times what? R squared. And alpha is just alpha. That's what we want to solve for. Okay, so let's think about what FT is. Okay, so again, tension is just due to, as we talked about earlier, is due to the spring force, whatever that is, on the left-hand side. And we know spring force is equal to Kx. So we can kind of plug in Kx for this. So this is going to be Kxr equals 1 half md r squared alpha. And again, x is going to be um, r times theta, which we already derived that previously. So that's k times r theta times r equals 1 half md r squared alpha. So let's just go ahead and simplify this. Okay, two r's on this side. That'll cancel with the r squared right there. So we got k theta equals 1 half md alpha. Okay, let's go ahead and solve for alpha. So this is going to be 2k theta divided by md equals alpha. There we go. Okay, let's go ahead and go through the rubric for this one. Okay, so for the rubric, this is actually t is actually at a fourth one. So you get one point for writing down the equation t mat equals i alpha. You get one point for correctly identifying what causes the torque, which is force of tension. So that's another point. You get one point for correctly calculating Ft, which is that's just going to be due to spring force, which is Kf. And then you get one point for a combined plugging in what i is correctly from the problem and plugging in what you already found for x, which is r theta. And there are your four points. So let's go ahead and look back at this one. So now we've got to do a graph of the angular velocity omega. Okay. So we know, I always draw like to draw the starting on each one. So we know everything starts at rest. It starts at rest right here. As the spring exerts a torque on it, which again is attached to the string, um, it's going to speed up. At the very, very end, when you get back to point P, again, that is just going to be when it is all, so when you get back to point P right here at the very beginning, that is when the spring is unstretched. So there's going to be no torque acting on it. So the angular acceleration would just be zero at that point, which angular acceleration, if the angular acceleration is zero, then the slope of a velocity versus time graph has to be zero. So that would be just for something like that. So the object will speed up as it goes. It'll speed up at a decreasing rate. Okay, so the rubric for this one is just out of two points. So you get one point if you identify it, it starts with angular velocity at zero and that omega increases. And then you get one point if you have a concave down um, graph. Awesome. So just a heads up, so that again, this is out of 15 points total. If you're getting around 9 to 15 points total on this problem, that's awesome. That is going to be an AP score of 5. 7 to 8 points is going to be a 4, 5 to 6 points is a 3, 4 points is a 2, and 0 to 3 points is a 1. Again, that is just my general kind of rule of thumb. It could be a little bit more, a little bit less, but I think this will kind of give you a good gauge for how you're doing on a problem. Great. Thanks for watching. Oh my goodness, I am so silly. I totally forgot about Part E, and I don't want to redo the video, so we'll just go through Part E right now, and then you know the total for that. Okay, so let's look at this. Okay. So now they're changing the pivot point. Interesting. So I always like to tell everyone in class, always draw an X. You're just really indicating in your head where is the pivot point. So now let's look at each force acting on um, this object. So we know we have the force of gravity acting on, on this like disc right here. So let's think about that. Okay. So does that force of gravity now increase, decrease, or stay the same relative to part B? Okay. So in part B, the pivot point was located right at the center of mass. So if the pivot point is at the center of mass, there's no like lever arm, like you're pushing down right at the, the gravity is pushing down right at the rotation point. So it's not going to cause it to rotate. But now you do have a rotation, like there's some distance from the pivot point. So force of gravity, the torque caused by that is going to increase it. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the other one. So the block, okay. So block is now 
farther from the pivot point. So the force of gravity due to the block is farther from the pivot point, so that is going to make the torque increase as well. Okay, so again, they say this, it is still in equilibrium. So since the torque on the right-hand side overall increases, the torque on the left-hand side too is going to have to increase as well. So the force due to like the spring slash tension on the left um, is also going to increase to make sure that the torque on the right is balanced by the torque on the left so that the system stays in equilibrium. And then the last force, force that we need to talk about is just the force exerted by the axle. So that's just going to be straight up at the axis. Um, and again, if you apply a force at the axis, that's not going to cause it to rotate. So that is just going to cause it to stay the same, which again is a zero. Okay, so for this one, you just get for the rubric, it is just one point for correctly identifying each um, force. Now you can add up your points. I jumped again on the last one. Sorry about that. But now you can add up all the points and see what you got. Awesome. Thanks for watching. Good luck.